Hey guys and girls, we are on the St. Lawrence River today. I come up here and met my buddy Roland Martin up here. And, and Roland and I have a great tournament history up here. We both had great tournaments. I, I know that I won a tournament here and I, I think that Roland won a tournament or got second place in one also. Knowing Roland, he probably won. But uh, it's a great river, a lot of smallmouth, a lot of largemouth. And uh, we're running around here this evening just kind of hitting some potpourri stuff. You know, I'm out here by myself and I've uh, done some filming with Roland and I've done some filming with uh, Will Clute, uh, a guide friend of ours up here that, that knows the area really good. Done some filming with some of the, my other buddies around. But I just thought I'd run out here this evening and just kind of mess around and hit some spots. I ran up to an area where there's a, there's a power dam or a, I don't know if it's a power dam or just a water blockage dam or whatever. I run up there to look around and see what I could find up there and didn't really find a lot, but I thought the water would be really, really clear and I might be able to see some fish on the bed. And I saw a few and I caught a couple of them, uh, but I didn't really stay up there really long. Come back down here in the river and I just thought I'd run a few points, run a few banks, see what happens. And so far we've done pretty good. So far we've done pretty good. pig. I mean a pig. Look at that pig. Holy moly. Golly. Holy, look at that pig. <laughs> I'm fishing the St. Lawrence River today. And I've got a really strange deal here. I come up here way up this pocket and it's, it's dammed off. It's dammed off. I don't know what it is. Some sort of a water flow dam or something right there. But tremendously clear water. I mean incredibly clear water. I mean drinking water. And I got to looking around the little bay here and I, I saw this fish over there. So I stopped and tried to catch it. And sure enough, I caught it. <laughs> sure enough, I caught it. And that's a pig. That is a pig. Golly. Come here, pig. Come here, baby. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that fish. Is that gorgeous or what? Four and a half pound large mouth, every bit of four, maybe five. Ah, probably not five, probably four and a half pounds. Beautiful fish in this clear water. Woo! <laughs> All I've got rigged up here, what I've got rigged up, I've got a, I got a little 16 pound slip sinker and a uh, KLB and hook. I'm gonna bite off a little bit of my lucky stick and, and a little lucky stick sinking worm on there but now i'm fishing it texas style got a regular texas style rig right here bring it back in there and hook it in there that worm's about busted in two i saw a smaller fish here somewhere also right here close by the boat might have stopped right on it i don't really know but i saw a smaller fish right here i'm going to just kind of cast around in this area because there might be some more right here I'm going to sort of fan cast around a little bit, see what might happen. Might be able to get another bite or two. And there's another one right there. That's what happens when you fan cast around in the right area. Another pig. Oh, look at that size of that one. Holy moly. Look at the size of that fish. Golly. <laughs> Golly. Look at the size of that smallmouth in that clear water. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. Come here, baby. Oh, it's a little bit too big to boat flip. Look how broad they are. Good lands. Look how wide, look how wide that fish is. Don't break that rod, Jimmy. Look how wide that fish is this way. Look at that, look how wide it is. And a big belly on it, look at that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Power poles are worth your weight and go when you're fishing a river like this. I don't think I can get another fish out of that. You gotta have a power pole. I was going down through there and I saw that fish and so I just stopped. I just stopped right where I saw the fish. I'm gonna get this right out of the way. And, uh, and power pole down and started fishing. And I caught the fish. And then I'm just gonna stay power pole. I'm just gonna make a few pitches around here. Even in this really, really clear water, let me tell you, they're very, very difficult to see. You need a good pair of Polaroid sunglasses. Of course, I've got Jimmy Houston sunglasses by SolarBat. They're very, very good. They only cost about 20 bucks a pair, but they've got the 
just as good a lens as in them as you get in a hundred two hundred dollar pair of sunglasses and uh, it's just an absolute absolute necessity when you're fishing this clear water up here where you could just get a little glimpse of a fish all you got to do you don't have to really see them real good you just need to get a little glimpse of them we'll fish around in here and see what happens i'm just going to leave it set here and i'm going to fish all the way around the boat you know there's a you generally there's more fish in an area than what you think there are so there's probably i only have seen that one fish it's the only fish i've seen well i've seen two on the end of my pole so i'm just going to sit here and cast a little bit not move the boat that's a small mouth <laughs> I don't know, over the years, I've caught so many fish around these, these locks and dams, it's amazing. If you get a lake, it's got Kentucky bass in it. There's usually a lot of spots around these. And I've also caught a lot of big largemouth. And of course, obviously, if you've got smallmouth like you do up here, there's gonna be smallmouth around them. Kind of a small one there. Wasn't really the one we was looking for, but the way I look at it, it's better than not getting a bite. I'll run into the wall then. Ah, that's a big piece of tubing right there. You know, I really believe we could have caught them if we'd have stayed up there around that big dam. That was kind of a cool area. The water was crystal clear and it was an area where we, we had a shot to, I think, catch some of them. I saw those in there and we caught a couple, but uh, we, we just decided to leave it. It was a long way from where we were fishing from. We'd come back down here, down the river and found a good bank. And now we got a little point right here. We're gonna hit this little point, see what we can do on it. That's a bass. <laughs> Pretty nice one, I thought it was a bluegill. I'm a good fisherman on a... <laughs> what is, I mean, it's a nice bass. Wow! <laughs> oh yeah, he got in the air. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. That's a good one, I thought it was a bluegill. God, look at that fish. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. Come in this boat with me, big fish. Oh, come over here. Woo, look at that one. Will you look at that one? That's what I'm talking about. My goodness. That's as big as that one I caught up here by that dam. Should have probably stayed in there and fished by that dam. A little bit longer. That was quite a few fish here, I think. Man, look at that fish. That's a big old smallmouth right there. Mm -mm -mm. I mean a big smallmouth. Golly, it's a pretty fish. Come on, baby. I gotta retie. I gotta retie. After you catch a big old fish like that, you need to retie. Power pole's down. Woo! Ah. That made me nervous. Got me shaking a little bit there. One's not too bad, but it is frayed. It's afraid not, it's what it is, afraid not. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of getting broken. Cut off about six or eight inches. Cut that knot off of there. Double your line. Get a pretty good chunk of line there, double your line. Run the double line through the inside of the hook on a worm hook, I like to go. I like to go on the inside, like I am right here. On the inside of that bin, not that, not the other way around. I don't know that it makes any difference at all, really. It's just the way that I've always liked to do it. Drop that hook. Don't even hold the hook. Lay that over the index finger of your left hand. Grab a hold of that then. This is the double line you stuck through the eye of the hook. Wrap it four times. Two, three, four. Go through that loop that's underneath your finger. Tighten it down, cinch everything down, pull that line, pull that line, hold that knot and then kind of pretty it up a little bit. You have a beautiful Jimmy Houston knot. I mean a beauty. Cut it off nice and close. Pure 100% knot. Yeah, come here baby. God. It's amazing how many smallmouth are in this river. 
I didn't move 10 foot from where I was power pole down. Hit another one, power pole down again. That's a pretty, pretty darn small mouth right there too. There he is. Hold still, hold still, hold still. We're gonna operate here. Yeah, pretty nice. Nothing wrong with that small mouth. Here we go, baby. Yeah, I saved my worm too. Those smallmouth are so mean, and when they jump out there, and, and if that worm slides up the line, they're so powerful that they'll throw that thing off there. This is what you call a sinking worm. But you fish it a lot of times without a weight, fish it wacky style. I've got a little 16th ounce, 16th ounce bullet weight on there. Fix the Texas rig. Just kind of was crawling along the bottom, shaking my rod, crawling, shaking the rod. And we're out here right now in about six foot of water, and I'm throwing up here in about a foot. So as we're coming out, it's gentle, and then it hits a little drop. A lot of those fish are right up above the drop. A lot of them are not below it. Sometimes some of them are, but... And I power pole down every time I get a bite because obviously there might be a few more right there close by. So you want to make a few, few more throws. That's not a bluegill. That's not a bluegill. Not a whole lot bigger. I don't know, it's not too bad. <laughs> You're catching too many big ones, Jimmy. Catching too many big ones when you start saying not much bigger than a bluegill for a small mouth like that. That's a beauty. Hey, spit my worm out on the floor. Good place for it, but my line feels kind of bad there in places. Hold still. Hold still, hold still. I've got a bad spot right there that I keep feeling. I just retied. Might have to just retie again. Golly. Wow, you could never have got loose. I was saying, oh, that's not much bigger than a bluegill. Here's one of the things you can do with these worms if you want. Since they start out and they're six inches long, you tear up one end like I've done with that one. I've caught two bass on it. I'm gonna just bite off the other end that's a slender end and use it for the top, make it a little, and it. And I tell you, I bet you I catch them just as good on it because I've done that before many a time, many a day, many a day, many a day. So over there under that big tree, sit back here like Mr. Bill Dance. Many times you will find that when smallmouth are moving down a big bank like this, there are many, many smallmouth there. Not just a few, but many. And there's one right there. <laughs> Woo, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. They are so much fun. They, oh, God, that might be a big one. Coming up, coming up, coming up. I thought he's getting ready to jump. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, it's a good fish. Come here, baby. Hope that bad spot I was feeling in my line don't break. I might not have any more hooks and sinkers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My buddy Willie Dance, he should be proud of me. I caught that fish, totally sitting down, landed it sitting down, cast sitting down, set the hook sitting down, and gave it some sugar, setting down with my lucky stick on backwards. Don't make any difference, they don't. That's about, that thing's about shot. I've caught three or four on it. You can catch three or four on one, one worm. Sometimes you don't catch any on one. Sometimes you catch three or four. Make it just a little shorter. We're gonna go a little shorter and see what happens. And I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference to those fish. They just see that thing going along down there and think, woo hoo hoo, there's something good to eat. I'm power pole down, so I'm gonna throw right up there to the end of that tree. I didn't. I threw under it that last time. I'm gonna throw it to the end of that tree. See what happens. Oh, 
Golly, that's what happened. Wow! <laughs> Did you see that jump? Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh! Did you see that? He jumped three foot in the air. That's he done. He jumped twice. That's unusual, and that might be the biggest one I've had. This is the biggest one those up there by that dam I was catching earlier. Oh, look at that fish! Holy moly! God, it's a big one. Golly, look at that giant. Look at that giant smallmouth. Holy smokes. I gotta get back here and sit down. Land this fish. I got so much stuff back here, I can't get hardly. I may not be able to get up. This is a giant. God, oh, look at that big fish. I had my hand in its mouth and it, and it tore, tore loose. I had my hand in its mouth and it tore loose. Isn't that something? That's a giant fish. Ah, it's a giant fish. Ah, oh, it's a giant fish. Holy cow, look at the size of that smallmouth. Look at that. That is a, that's way over five pounds. If I could, I'm not sure I can get back up. <laughs> ah, ah. That is way, way over five pounds. Look at that. That is a that is a huge, huge, huge one. That and that was on that little bitty piece of a of a worm, not even a full worm. Oh my goodness. What a small mouth that is. Look at that. That is a giant. Look how broad it is and how wide it is, how fat it is. That is amazing. Holy smokes. God. Hey. I gotta take a selfie of this. I gotta take me a selfie. Oh, I got my phone turned off. That's a bad deal. I wanna let it go. I don't wanna keep it out of the water any longer. That's a five and three quarter pound, maybe. Close to six pounds, small man. And I got my phone turned off. I got that one. That's not near as big as that one I just lost. <coughs> I just lost one a lot bigger than that one. That's a pretty good one. Power pole down. Come here, baby. Oh, you're dang right, that's a good one. I don't know, he might be as big as that one I just, that one I just lost really felt heavy. It's a big fish right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that girl. Look at that girl down in that water, whoa! Look at that girl. Come here, baby. Come here, sugar booger. Come here, sugar booger, in this boat with me. Woo, yeah. Now, that other one I just lost was bigger than this. I'm telling you. Y'all can take my word for it. I would not tell you a lie. That's a nice one, though. That's a good fish right there. Brown sugar. Ha, ha, ha. Two cast in a row right there, sports fans. One of the things about these smallmouth, I'm telling you, they are definitely school fish. I mean, they are definitely school fish. And when they come in in the springtime, like we're here right now in the spring, when they come in, they actually will come in in waves. When I'm talking about a wave, I'm talking about quite a few fish coming in at the same time. You know, they're just like swimming up here, four or five here, four or five here, four or five here. And there might be, you know, 100 fish come in in a short period of time or 200 fish. It's just like, like doves migrating or something. And they're all just moving up into the areas where they're going to spawn. Most of them are going back probably where they were hatched out when they were babies to spawn out. And uh, it's just, oh. And, and a good thing is they keep replenishing themselves in a lot of these places. You know, they, they, uh, you catch them one day and you go back and catch them again the next day and they're different fish. They're different fish because they're moving, they're replenishing themselves. And when they get to where they're spawning, of course that's where they're gonna spawn, but. There's another one. Oh, look at him go. Woo, right on top of the water. Right on top of the water. Oh. Stay on there, buddy. Stay on there, baby. You want a little sugar, you better stay buttoned up. You unbutton, you get no loving. Look at that guy pull. That's not as big as the other one. 
on a nice one now. Oh, come in here with me. Ooh, careful there what you're doing. Yeah. I love this game. I love this game. That's a pretty one too. What can I say? Reckon I can get one more out of that little stick? I don't know if I can bite off a little bit. Because it's broken the middle, so what I'm gonna do is try to get the hook on the other. See this broke right here? I'm gonna try to get the hook on the other side of it. So the hook will hold those two pieces together. Now it's down to about four inches maybe. It's down to about four inches. So let's see. Let's see if that four inches will catch a fish. Yep. <laughs> Woo! Yep, it'll catch one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't need a oh, six-inch bait or a five-inch bait. I need need a four-inch bait. I do a lot of work with four inches. Ooh, that's a nice one. God, it's another nice one. Oh, I got still got a little bit of worm life. I might be able to do it again. If that doesn't flip it off. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Get around there. Just right jump in this boat with me. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Goodness, look at that fish. That fish been caught before. Look up here. I mean, he's been caught pretty good, as a matter of fact. That's not me. That's been quite a while ago. It's kind of almost down to the bone. Somebody, I don't know what they hooked him with, but he's still ready to bite again. Okay. <laughs> Golly. Oh, man, I'm telling you, it's amazing. When we found them today, we found them, and they've been big. That's another big one. They've been big. Oh, get in this boat. Ah. Is that sweet or is that sweet? Oh, good man. Ah. Guys and girls, go up north and catch small mouth. If you get the opportunity, go to the St. Lawrence River. My buddy up here, Will Flute, guides on this river right here, Lake Ontario. The Seneca, Cayuga, New York, uh, Lake St. Clair in Detroit, Lake Champlain, Winnipesaukee. These fish, fish are special, and there's a lot of them. And remember, guys and girls, I love them. I sure do love you.